Well, it's about 24 to 5. It's a Friday afternoon. In fact, I think it seems to be Friday afternoon pretty much every... Well... <laughs> every Friday afternoon. <laughs> and it does. Which means Luke Smith from Envision Financial is here to talk money once again. We've got a really interesting topic today because obviously yeah. in recent years it's become more and more frequent that young people starting out on their home ownership journey will rely upon the services of the bank of mum and dad. Yep. But... Of course, this does open up the door to some potential problems. So, today's topic is this. So, you have lent money to your kids for their house, or promised to guarantee their loan. You will get that money back, right? Depends. Or will you? <laughs> Depends. <laughs> and I think that's, that's the importance of what's going on in this sort of theme of managing um, your asset base and managing your, your position and also keeping in mind the environment we're moving into from an economic perspective with rising interest rates and potential duress, additional costs, expensive lettuce, expensive meat, expensive fuel, expensive everything. You want to know that you've done the right thing. And I guess I don't want anybody to take that I'm anti getting help from mum and dad. Not at all. If, if you're fortunate enough that mum and dad can help you with a deposit, help secure something, put up an asset of security, Use it to your best advantage to try and get yourself in a position that helps you financially. That's awesome. But just remember that mum and dad need to be protected just like the bank yeah. wants protection from you. Now, of course, every family situation is different and there might be some families where mum and dad are prepared to actually make a gift of a large sum of money to use mm -hmm. as a deposit. And if that's the circumstances you find yourself in, well, good luck. Not everybody's quite that well off, mm. um, but uh, that's okay. If you're in a position to do that, that oh, that's sure. fine. But if you if you want to make it a loan instead of a gift, it's not enough just to shake hands on it, is it? Well, I, I wouldn't gift anything, personally, and, and a lot of the lawyers that I speak to and deal with and, and what we do for a lot of our clients is you, you never gift anything. Mm -hmm. You always document everything as a loan because there's proof that it will come back. And the reason that I say that's important is that Everybody has the best of intentions at the start of an exercise. And your son may marry a young lady, your daughter may marry a young man, your son may marry a man, or whatever your combination of whatever is. That's cool. But you're effectively, as a parent, helping out your child. Your child just happens to be part of a relationship with somebody else. But as a parent, you're saying, here, here's some help. Yeah. What you're not saying is, here, let's help this guy or this girl on the other side of the transaction. So documenting something in relation to a loan is important because the intention is that money comes back. Now, as a parent, money's not a boomerang, it's generally a stick. <laughs> you throw it, it doesn't come back, and you know that when you go into it. Yeah. But that doesn't stop you documenting a loan for a range of reasons that may be very important. So let's touch on some of those. I give money to my daughter, she buys a house, Five years later, she gets divorced. There's no documentation. The house gets sold, assets get separated, and there's nothing forcing the bereaved party in that relationship to give back what I gave my daughter as part of the settlement proceeds. Yeah. So you document a loan, you have something in writing, and in that agreement, what a good solicitor will do, as I understand it, is say, what are the trigger events that can result in the money coming back to mum and dad. Now, as I said earlier, a loan as a parent, we know it's never coming back. All right, my daughters are four and six and I'm already losing that argument. <laughs> yes. It's not gonna get any better for me no, over the next not. 30 years. But we know that as parents, right? Yes. We love our kids, we do whatever we can for our kids and my parents were no different when I was a kid and, and that's the same with all generations. But you write it down just in case. What if somebody dies? Yes. So you've given money to your son or your daughter as part of a relationship. Your son has died. Are you going to let your son's wife keep that money in the house when she's not your blood? Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. Maybe you want it back in that situation. Again, if it's not documented, very difficult to force. So all we're trying to highlight with today's show is... Prepare for the worst. Yep. Document things like you would with anybody else. And whatever happens, happens. 
but you know that you're not trying to retrospectively fix or enforce something that has no legal standing. Yeah. In, in many ways, it's helping to safeguard against unexpected events. Yeah. Uh, like you say, if somebody passes away or if there's... I mean, everybody who gets married, they don't plan to get divorced. No. But about half of them do. Well, so exactly. So you've got yep. to take into account the reality that that might occur. So in those circumstances, how would you like the situation to be resolved? Would you like the property to be sold, the money that you advanced to be returned, whether yep. or not with any interest or whatever the case might be? Exactly. If that's all worked out yep. in detail and documented, yep. then everybody knows where they stand. And, and that's it. Trying to get something done in the heat of a battle, in the heat of a war, in the, in the heat of the moment, is it going to be very, very difficult? So if you go into it well organised, well planned, and, and you know exactly where everybody stands at the start of the transaction, if the money never comes back, fine, no dramas. But if certain events occur, that's really important. Take another scenario. What if mum and dad end up with dementia? What if mum and dad lose capacity mm. and they need that money back to move into a facility where they need assisted living? Yeah. So again, important to remember that it's not love don't love it's not like don't like it's not that it's forced but there could be specific trigger events relevant to your family or your existing situation that would be very very important to have documented in something another one that i i learned this one last night chatting to a, a, a solicitor friend of mine some banks now are asking where mum and dad drop money into an account as a deposit right before the settlement of a transaction yes. they're actually asking for a non-refundable gift statutory declaration. So if you're not organised and at the last minute mum and dad have gone, oh, here's 50, and the bank sees that and goes, hang on, what's this? Oh, that's come from mum and dad. You actually didn't save it under the, the serviceability test that they, they undertake. They can ask you to sign a non-refundable gift statutory declaration. Now, as I understand it, I was told last night, if you sign one of those, that supersedes a loan agreement. So now you've got at risk your money yep. as the lender and you've got no legal provision potentially. Again, not a lawyer, but I would see it as being very difficult to try and enforce something when you sign a declaration that it's a gift to then have a loan agreement on the side. Yes, It all gets a little bit murky. So again, be organised, be prepared. Also consider, are you lending this money into a business environment? What if your daughter's married a young man who's a builder? and his building company goes under. Is there something in there to protect you as a creditor from his business? Yes. Is he on the hook personally? So again, we've got to really sort of open our eyes to the contingencies that we need to address, what could happen, and prepare for all things. Because if you lend, if the bank lends you money, they're registered on the title of the property. Yeah. One, one other alternative is to have a caveat at settlement where there's a caveat put at the time of settlement on the property so that if it is sold, you need to be notified and you need to agree to the sale. And that can then force your deposit or your loan to be repaid to you like a creditor at the time that the property is sold prior to a family court separation, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's like most things in life. If you prepare for the worst mm. and you get a great outcome, wonderful. Yes, It's only the people that get disgruntled by being unprepared that believe they've been hard done by or potentially damage the relationship in a family through no fault of really anybody's a party to the, the transaction. Yes. Because you just haven't thought that it would really happen. Yep. And as you said earlier, some things just generally do. Yeah, well, that's right. And, you know, you might uh, hope and pray that uh, you're not going to uh, suffer any of the setbacks that commonly befall people, but... Mm -hmm. They do commonly befall people, so yeah. you're not necessarily immune. Now, I've got a question for you, Luke. Yeah. We've started off this uh, talking about lending money to your kids yeah. um, or offering to guarantee the loan. Now, obviously, if you're offering to guarantee the loan, you're not actually putting money up front, no, are you? No, no, very different, exactly right. So, you know, I think in next week's show, we'll talk about ways to protect your cash flow yeah. if you have been the guarantor of something so that you are potentially on the hook for those ongoing payments if your son or daughter doesn't have the capacity to do that. And next week, we're gonna to touch on ways to try and protect yourself and your kids in that in that situation. But if we're gonna hand over some money, I want people to remember that whilst you love your son, your daughter and, 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 and related entities, 
you are lending. The bank doesn't give you money without an agreement and says, you'll be okay, you're a nice guy. Mm -hmm. Doesn't happen. No. You need to remember that this is a formal transaction and should be treated as such with the appropriate paperwork. And as we said, if the money never comes back, so be it. If there's no interest rate charged, so be it. If the interest rate is in the agreement, but it never gets paid, so be it. That's just the price of love. That's just the price of being a parent these days. And again, right. just control the, the, the uncontrollable aspects of those transactions. So the bottom line here is that your advice is that even in the situation where a parent actually wants to give the money as a gift, that for all sorts of reasons, it's a good idea to make it into a loan agreement, yep. even if you don't actually intend to claim that loan back again. Correct, exactly right. Because there could be things at play that are out of your control, that may be out of your son or daughter's control, but you may still want the money back in certain situations, and it's important to have that documented and be prepared, yeah. then wish you had. And as we said before we came on here, Again, not a lawyer, but it's like trying to get a prenup signed in the midst of a divorce. Yes. Don't like Good your like chances. Then. <laughs> exactly. And this will be very similar, trying to get money back on the sale of a house yeah. when there's no legal impost for somebody to give you back that money because it's not documented. Mm. And I guess the sale of the house or the, you know, the resale of the house would be one of the obvious trigger events that you would list uh, in your yeah. loan agreement. Yeah. Even be. if there was no other, if no divorce, nothing else, just... A matter Correct. of once the house is sold, then yeah. the money comes back. Yeah, exactly right. You know, it, it, again, it's, it's about thinking about reasonable contingencies or reasonable events that would be associated with a transaction and making sure you've written it down because it may help you at some point. And, and I think that, that incapacity one's a, a big one that a lot of people don't think about. You need some extra money to get into a facility because you've lost your capacity. Yeah. Well, you don't want to forget you had a loan. No, you don't. That's indeed. not your fault either. I have occasionally heard people saying, oh, look, I trust my son, but I trust my daughter, and I, I don't really feel right about trying to make them sign documents. I don't, it'll make them feel as if I don't trust them. Well, uh, yeah, I, I think... People do that, you know, have yeah, those no, feelings. Yeah, no, 100%, and, and I think that's... You just need to put your big boy, big girl pants on and realise that we live in a commercial world. And it's not about trust, it's not about love, it's not about a lack of love, lack of trust, or anything else. You are, as a mature adult, you are making a financial transaction, and you should be able and understanding and willing. If you're gonna take that money, it comes with a, yeah. a, 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 a catch, and it's a formal transaction. Yeah, it's just a part of being responsible. Yeah. 11 minutes to five on 2CC, Luke Smith from Envision Financials with me in the studio talking money matters once again and how to help out your kids without putting your own financial well-being at risk. We'll be back with more in just a moment. Seven minutes to five on a Friday afternoon. Chat and finance with Luke Smith from Envision Financial. Today we're talking about uh, offering the services of the bank of mum and dad to our kids to get their foot on the property ladder and some of the pitfalls that uh, might befall you along the way. So mm. Luke, we've covered a fair bit of territory already. What are yeah. the key things to consider when it comes to lending money to our kids? Yeah, I think the first one is document, 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 and then check your document. Write it down. If you're gonna put your big boy pants on, your big girl pants on and buy a place, and you wanna take money from mum and dad, write it down. It's an agreement, it's formal. If the money never comes back, so be it. And even if it's not really a loan, it's still a loan. It's still a loan because of the fact, as we spoke about before the ad break in, what if someone dies? You may want the money back. What if someone has incapacity? You may want the money back. What if somebody gets divorced? You probably want the money back. So document the things that could happen as trigger events to protect your capital, and hopefully, your son or your daughter marries somebody and they live together happily forever after, and you never need the money back, or have a formal arrangement like you would like a bank. It's not bad, it's not good, it's not different, it's not a lack of love, it's not too much love, it's not everything we spoke about before the ad break. It's just a normal transaction. It's just like an insurance policy, and in that sense, uh, it's far better to have it and not need it than it is to need it 
and not have it. So like a legal mobile phone, mate. Exactly right. <laughs> Spend a thousand bucks on an agreement rather than lose fifty thousand dollars because your son decides he doesn't like somebody anymore. Um, plan for the worst, have a better outcome, have specific trigger events relevant to you. If you want to put an interest rate in there, great. If you don't, great. Doesn't really matter. Whatever you want to document, have something drawn up as an agreement. Be organised and be prepared, as we said before the ad break. If the bank can ask you to sign a statutory declaration that it's a non-refundable gift, don't bring that into contention. Open a bank account, get the money in there plenty early, meet the serviceability rules, don't trigger anything with the banks, um, because it's very hard to do that and enforce two agreements of different standings. Again, not a lawyer, check with your legal professional. Think about using a caveat, put a caveat at settlement that the money's given back at the time of sale. So there's, it's legally registered, it's there, it's, it's, it's in the system. And again, it's done at the time of settlement. It's recognising money that mum or dad may have thrown at the property. And at the time of sale, you can refund it and then separate assets or use the proceeds to buy another house because you've made some money on the asset that you bought originally. Um, and don't, don't try and do things in a heated environment like a potential divorce and ask for money back and further exacerbate an already difficult situation. By being prepared, you can get through bad things with a little bit less strain and a little bit less complication. So at the end of the day, the bottom line is, yes, you can give money to your kids, but mm. even if it is meant to be a gift, you can still make it a loan because of all those reasons we have just outlined. Exactly. And that means there is a little bit more peace of mind for everybody concerned. Exactly right. And it's a bit like uh, when you're giving kids the pocket money while they're five years old. You know, you're teaching them to budget and be responsible. Well, now they're grown up, get them to sign documents and be responsible. Exactly right. <laughs> I've just got to get my daughter learn how to swing an axe. She can chop wood and earn her money. <laughs> no dramas. Oh, you're a hard taskmaster indeed. Luke, thanks very much. Uh, but before you go today, yep. you have to tell us where can listeners get more information. Yep, so 6260 We've got envisionfinancial.com.au on the website. We've got the podcast, The Strategy Stacker. Luke talks money on iTunes and Spotify. And we've got the YouTube channel, Envision Financial Canberra, where we've got all the recordings of the show. Watch it there, on the couch. Don't have to read anything. Stop it, pause it. There's a little bit of something for everybody. Fantastic stuff. So thanks very much for popping by and we'll catch you again next week. See you next week. Luke Smith from Envision Financial. And uh, of course, uh, you can always get in touch with Luke's office on uh, 62604749. Luke will be back in the studio once again at the usual time next Friday afternoon right here on 2CC.